Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everybody, I am continuing previous topic key concepts and terminologies and you have seen in last lecture that I started with the terminologies like safety, risk, accident, mishap, then hazard with military standard definitions of hazard and accident. Then hazard triangle we have elaborately discussed. We will continue with hazard triangle, primarily the hazard theory and then we will discuss some, some more topic like causal factors and hazard recognition. If you see this slide that hazard triangle, hazard theory, then causal factors, hazard recognition, individual and societal risk, risk perception, acceptable risk, prevention through design. These are the few, few terms, terminologies, concepts which are, which are very much pertinent to safety engineering. We have already completed a few, for example, hazard elements. What are the things I have completed? I can say that hazard element, initiating mechanism, target and threat and then this hazard triangle part we have completed and with example, we have also seen that how to write a hazard or describe a hazard where hazard element, initiative mechanism, target threat all will be all will be included and the sequence also will be discussed. That is what we have discussed and I told you that this is nothing but the hazard actuation. Now, see when um, there is no accident, what is the condition? The condition is like this, that means when you do some work any job, any operation, any process, there are hazards, targets, threats, initiating mechanisms, they are basically hidden haphazard, not making any chain of events. Now, it is the failure of the safety management to allow these elements to become a chain like this hazardous element and then there are three initiative mechanism in sequence form a chain and then finally, accident has taken place means hazard has realized two accidents and then that is a big problem. And the job of safety engineer is the hazard and IM must not occur. The hazard will be there, IMs may will be there, target threat will be there, but it should not occur means this kind of chain sequence should not occur. Obviously, if there is no hazard, accident is not an issue, no question of accident. If there is no initiating mechanism possible, no question of accident. But please keep in mind that whatever small system you design, by design inevitably there will be all those elements. So, it is the job of safety engineer to understand this and do the needful. This is one thing what in the book of written by hazard analysis, written by Erickson to Clifton, the name of the book is hazard analysis techniques for system safety, very, very, very important book. Now, the same thing graphical 
representation you see these three component of hazards in the top figure there are all those loopholes but they are not aligned this is hazard when they are aligned you see the timing is very important there is a particular time when all those things aligned and it leads to accident and this is what is the actuation ok so this is nothing but another way of explaining the hazard mishap actuation as I told you a safety engineers job I am repeating the word several times in fact uh, last class also I repeated it several times that this hazardous condition to mishap hazardous condition to mishap it is my hazardous condition this is mishap this is the biggest issue you see what we are written here it is also taken from this book the time energy or function build up point of no return is reached level of safety degraded so these things will happen then only a hazard will lead to accident there is another interesting concept here is known as entropy risk model that will I, I will discuss later in detail but this entropy risk model is very very important one what do we mean by design you create certain amount of risk that is known as residual risk residual which is inherited by the system now what happen over time this side is time over time the process the technology the human the environment component of a system these are the these are the component of a system this will deteriorate so that deterioration ultimately lead to increase in risk so there will be a threshold risk so this one is risk so this is the point under time this is the time you are saying this is the time when the threshold risk increases to the risk increases what risk this is known as entropy risk the deterioration decay in the system increases from the residual part to up to this threshold part at a particular time when the accident has taken place and it is because all those process technology human environment this deteriorate over time they all this decay the decaying or disorientation ultimately lead to entropy risk so that means when you design a system you have two component one is residual risk plus entropy risk so it is you who must understand that how much risk you are build you are living with the system and how much risk will be created if the system is not maintained over its life cycle so these are this is the point where energy build up to a level point of no return is at reached and levels of safety degraded with reference to process technology human environment level of safety degraded so what will happen when an accident take place at this point lot of efforts to reduce this risk to a level you will but it is definitely less than threshold risk but it takes some time to come to this and again we become complacent that okay nothing will happen because of this much time nothing has happened and this complacency again raise the risk level to threshold level and then this is the second time instant first accident has taken place here this is the second accident that has also taken place then again you will find out that actually what happened 
all those things happen together to system parameters. So, again you start thinking and again the risk will be reduced, but by this process what happen every time you you create certain amount of permanent risk here and here the you started residual risk this is by design if it is this much because of poor maintenance, housekeeping, uh, operations everything. So, ultimately the residual part or the inherent part it will go on increasing and at certain time what happen it will be almost equal to threshold risk and nothing possible you have to dispose the system. This is known as entropy risk model and this one this transition phase basically is called it is, this is the process what is happening here. It will be our job to 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 protect the deterioration for process, for technology, for health, human, for environment and so that you will not go to reach to the threshold risk. Okay. I hope it, it makes sense. Now, this process technology, your human environment, all those things are very, very important I told you and these are also that is why these are also termed as causal factor, causal factor. Sorry, this causal factors. What are the causal factors? Causal factors means the factors alone in our combination will ultimately resulted in the transition to complete from hazards to accidents. Okay. So, when an accident takes place immediately you investigate and you find out immediate causes these are basically related to your physical process related to your equipment related to the environment related to the human related to their interface. So, related to material okay. and that can be it can be classified in other way also like different energy. So, all those things leads to accident and and if you if you go little more or you dig down into further then you will find out level 3 factors level 3 causes. So, like this. So, these are all level 3 causes. If you sh this is what is risk factors, causal factors. What are the causal factors? Causal factors, first level causal factor is hazards, hazard component. It is given in level 1. Then, what is this? When you see the hazard element, these are nothing but the source of the resources of for hazard. So, this is basically the hardware, energy, material, chemical, all those things. Then you require initiating mechanisms to happen, these are also related to these hardware, software, their interface, humanware, function, environment, all those things. And target threat are all actually the property, people, and environment. Human is the people, hardware, system is the property, and environment. So, that means target and threat will be either people, property, or environment, or in combinations. So, when you identify the hazard you will find out that related different component and they are related level to causal factors. If you further dig down what will happen suppose you are talking about hardware okay, let a motor fail then you will find out why that those motor fails. So, then level 3 specific causes you found out like failure modes for example, pump, pump fails to run, pump uh, stop prematurely, okay, pump overrun. So, those mean this, this, this are the failure mode. So, that means you will like from with reference to energy pressure build up, you are not able to control it further. So, all those things ultimately you will further find out and they are level 3 factors. This level 3 factors you see failure mode, software error, timing error, human error, design error there is proximity problem, exposure problem, protection problem, 
okay so the the amount of amount of protective um, system protective measures that must be there to prevent accident that is not there all those things we will slowly discuss but these are the key under key concept and terminologies i am just giving you that please see, see the the complexity the diversity the uh, multidisciplinary nature of this particular topic now i with the help of hazard triangle we have made a model here you see that there are components like there are components like hazard element component like initiating mechanism like the target and threat and also there is a there is there is a path mechanisms target and threat what way we have developed it? a particular hazardous element initiated by initiating different mechanisms cause accident and this accident have different kind of threats like fatality loss time injury property damage in environmental discharge and these are targeted to targets like property like people like environment okay so property people environment that means what is what actually our aim here our aim is you have seen that by design there will be hazardous elements there will be different initiating mechanisms that will occur and ultimately there will be a time when the system component deteriorates it may be human it may be your process it may be technology it may be uh, i can say that software so those things will deteriorate over time and the threshold will risk achieves and accident ha will take place now <coughs> design engineer or other way i can say the safety engineer who are responsible for design of product or process they must understand this path the reason is if if i know hazardous element followed by sequence of initiative mechanisms causes accident having threat of different kinds and targeting to either people property or environment that mean i know the path once i know the path i have to break this path so breaking of this path is done by risk control system so you is your system having sufficient amount of risk control measures to prevent the accident then this risk control or preventive risk control system and and once accident takes place there is concept of mitigation so mitigation this is prevention there also risk control system will be there and interestingly most of the control system will be related to like this either inspection or maintenance problem or staff competency problem or operating procedure problem or instrumentation and alarm problem or there is change planned change management of change there may be communication problem permit to work problem planned design redesign problem emergency arrangement problem so your risk control system will pertain will will be will be one or more of this but this is not the totality maybe but this is the mostly it will it will cover the entirety so now you understand that when you talk about accident causation the transition that how these things are happening okay so now give an example you have to understand so let us see one example we have taken the case 
working at height. We have observed for two years data for a particular company and then we found out all the hazardous element from 18 I think around 90 observation 89 to 90 observation let it be 90 observations we have considered that be 90 working at height related incidents of different cat different severity it has occurred we have that data. And then when we analyze we found out 90 odd hazard elements for each case one hazard elements, but many a time they are common. So, the hazardous element when we further classify we found out that carrying load at height this is the source, area requiring preventive measure or work permit this is another and job requiring. So, that means one is basically the area location another one is basically job requiring preventing and major work permit another one is the load that they are carrying not all the case all the times everything is there. Okay. So, we are saying that this general element in there will be different kind of initiating mechanisms when we analyze the initiating mechanism we found out that these are the these are the initiating mechanisms inappropriate or missing anchoring damage underrated structure object unsaved act work ethics natural event inappropriate abs or inappropriate or absent of structural protection and then unsafe working conditions and inappropriate object fixing or handling at height. This is just a case specific it is for a particular plant for a particular period of time with certain inspection this data generated and it found out. That means, what is happening from a safety engineering point of view? So, you are getting a path hazardous element initiative mechanism like this. Now, if I consider one hazard element with seven initiative mechanism if possible then seven path is created. Example carrying load at height this is my hazardous element under damage underrated structure then damage and underrated I am 2 causes accident it may be fall up high fall from height or let it be let it be fall from height causes fall from height accident resulting injury to person. So, that means that hazard triangle is complete that means the the line is created one is carrying load second one is initiating mechanism and target fit the line all those 90 odd cases the timing that means the alignment of those components have been taken place. My question is that when there are 100 such incidences why we are not able to prevent those the reason is we might have be lacking there the risk control system. When I analyze the data I found that no information related to risk control system, no information related to responsibility accountability you have to that mean the complete management is not there it is there some, but the, the description not reflecting that. Okay. So, this is an interesting model that we have developed with simple very simple hazard triangle concept. Now, follow this those who are working participants for you have for you it has immediate application because you you already have such data. Those who are students graduating for them this is a wonderful model and later on you will see that we will we will build on this model many concepts many many things. Okay.
so as i told you the path is created the path it, we have seen that hazardous element to target thread the path created because failure of the risk control system so hazard to this see the holes swiss cheese model swiss cheese model you google it swiss cheese model i think maybe just see the spelling if it is me wrong please check so here another interesting concept you see that lagging indicators leading indicators usually by lagging indicators what do you mean means we create indicators based on accident already occurred like number of lti number of fatalities okay so if we go one step further we will say that which risk control system fails that maybe it is because of poor maintenance these are actually already hop occurred so they will basically leading indicate lagging indicators lagging means after event indicators what is after event here it may be accident of large like top level accident or it may, it may be a first aid or near miss or it may be while inspecting you may find that some of the maintenance operations and other issues design issues all those things are there so failure of the risk control systems ultimately those events will talk about lagging indicators now in order to maintain the health of these risk control systems what you will do that gives you leading indicators so leading indicator leads to or predicts can predict lagging indicator okay so my question here is you have to create case for this i am giving you the concept when we will be discussing in detail the leading leading and lagging indicators we will discuss one or more cases but it cannot be possible to tell you several cases under this because of time constraint but those who are listening to me please understand it is applicable to safety in all domain all context you have to you have to use this and if i know the leading indicators i am telling you prevention is very much easy it is basically we don't know what are the leading indicators of safety industry academia everywhere that the problem is that we have not come to this we are not matured in this level it's a it's a hot topic that's why today for high risk or even low risk plants also that how to find out the leading indicators and then using leading indicator predict the lagging indicators i hope that it makes sense now finally i'll i'll, I'll talk about hazard recognition so before telling this let me repeat what we have learned so far so you have learned that three elements or three components of of a hazard three components hazard element initiating mechanism and target and threat you have understand that safety ontology causal fact accident path and causal factors and you you found out that the causal factors can be related to system components entropy model then i also talk about risk control systems 
which are of two types preventive preventive means the the control measures to prevent accident to happen and then mitigative mitigative mean even if accident has taken place the severity can be minimized mitigative then one one case with or uh, 90 odd data 90 odd data how the safety ontology will give you rules different rules ok so all those things and apart from last class so many terminologies you have discussed all those things if you really do definitely safety engineering will be in place ok and you will understand hazard you will recognize hazard here some of the key issues further further described what is hazard recognition understanding of hazard theory i hope you understand now a uh, hazard analysis techniques to provide consistent and methodological processes hazard analysis technique we have not discussed understanding of hazard recognition methods not discussed understanding of system design and operation it will not be discussed it is expected that an engineer from every operations every discipline they must know their system when if you do not know have the system knowledge you cannot do so that is why here very very important is your your design knowledge is very important design knowledge then your hazard knowledge then your um, lessons learned lessons learned very very important now what are the key recognition factors utilizing hazard triangle you have understood now utilizing past knowledge i told you already analyzing good design practices this knowledge is important review of general design safety criteria per safety principles from engineering design it will it should come review of analysis of generic level 2 causal factors level 2 mean all the system related factors key failure state questions evaluation of top level accidents and safety critical functions we will see some of the things you have understood now some of the things will come will follow so i hope that the concepts are coming uh, are being recognized by you and i will take uh, i think one more lecture on this terminologies on the concepts and uh, and then actually we will build on this concepts and theories later on the hazard identification techniques risk assessment then different probability models and then finally safety function deployment accident other causations theories uh, so many things are there prevention through design and and so forth okay thank you very much